we've alluded to the theory that you have that yeah. uh, there's some sort of a cyclical phenomenon going on. C can you briefly explain your theory? Well, to be honest, we invented our theory really to correct the uh, the 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 bandwagon, the inflationary bandwagon. So, you know, I was dismayed that uh, the majority of the world's cosmologists and, and theoretical physicists had bought into this model, which seemed to me very ill-founded. It wasn't making pre precise predictions. It was claiming to predict things which, in fact, were a consequence of much simpler things. Um, and. Uh, and so, so, you know, more or less in the, you know, to, 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 to try to be difficult, <laughs> uh, we said, well, let's turn things, turn things upside down and come out with a completely different model, which, you know, we, we will present as a possibility. Um, and if we can make it as predictive as inflation, no better, then, you know, at least it will give people pause and make them think, well, maybe we don't really understand what happened. That was my motivation for inventing the cyclic model of the universe. I, I, let's try, we explicitly discussed this, my, myself and Paul, you know, let, let us try and make a model which is just as good as inflation, but uh, is able to explain the observations of everything around us from completely different assumptions. And in our case, the assumption was that there was a universe before the Big Bang, and it underwent a collapse and went through this collapse and rebounded or bounced and gave rise to everything we, we see around us. So there's a succession of universes. Yes. Collapse, expand, collapse, expand. That's right. But there are no other universes that are parallel to ours. No, I mean, uh, it's a quantum theory. So they, the, it does involve quantum parallel universes for sure. It, what it doesn't involve is this multiverse of uh, randomly uh, initiated Big Bangs, uh, because that, as I say, is really an unpredictive theory. Um, we were trying to make a predictive theory. I mean, I should say our theory is uh, very much a, uh, you know, uh, put up as a rival, a competitor. Um, what's really dramatic over the last uh, three years are the observations. We've discovered at the Large Hadron Collider that there is a Higgs boson. But all of the predictions of supersymmetry and supersymmetric particles, which are associated with string theory, all of those have not proven correct. There are no other particles so far. And so all the, uh, you know, the, the most famous particle physicists, like Steven Weinberg, who were confidently predicting that Large Hadron Collider would see supersymmetric particles, um, have so far uh, got egg on their face. Uh, nature has somehow found a simpler way. And it's a way which is so simple that we can't yet make sense of it. Uh, nature's found out a way of, getting, of just having one Higgs boson and nothing, nothing else along with it. And then comes the Planck satellite. And again, there was this <coughs> plethora of theoretical models which could predict almost any pattern on the sky you could imagine. And the Planck satellite measured the pattern last year and they find out it's the simplest possible pattern, just describable in two numbers. And uh, the universe is telling us it is simple. It is astonishingly simple. And yet here we are with thousands of physicists worrying about a multiverse of infinitely complex universes which we can't see and so on and so forth. I think it's great because they're all on the wrong lines. <laughs> and uh, all these very, very smart people are distracted with a lot of confusing ideas. Whereas I think that I personally believe we are on the threshold of, of uh, something really fundamental, which is that we now have the clues. What we need are the theoretical ideas which will resolve these conundra of what is the dark energy you know, which dominates our universe. It's deeply paradoxical. How does the Higgs fit into this? We know that if the Large Hadron Collider measurements are correct, then our vacuum, the vacuum we live in, empty space, is unstable, and it's going to decay in the future. Where is it going to go? Uh, th this is an experimentally, you know, based inference. That, uh, so, so, and I, again, I think it's a vital clue.